Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Cavern to Creature series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're talking about the spell Jim's Magic Missile. All right, tell us about this one, Sam. Cool. There's another Acquisitions Incorporated spell. Uh, if you come from uh, our last one we just did, it was uh, Fast Friends, which Bob had some powerful opinions on. You can go check that out. Um, but this is, for, again, from the Acquisitions Incorporated book. So I like to preface this by saying these spells aren't aimed at changing how the game is played, but more so offering tools for a more whimsical, I don't, I'm going to say more comedic moments. This is a way to, they're not aimed at changing the power of the game. They're more aimed at approaching a specific style and feel um that's a good way to start because there's like their comedy group there chris perkins is the guy that runs it he's uh dnd one of their developers and there's a bunch of comedians ish people on stage funny personalities um that do live plays basically and this book is about their characters functionally so jim's magic missile fits into that bill uh it's a first level evocation spell it's from jim dark magic this very spooky again comedic character who's uh a somewhat incompetent wizard um you have a one action, 120 foot range, just like Magic Missile. Uh, it has a verbal, somatic, and material component, the material component being a gold coin, which is a tax to use the spell, um, with a duration of instantaneous. You create three twisting, whistling, hypoallergenic, gluten free darts of magical force. All of that should give you context to what the spell is trying to do. Uh, each dart can target a creature of your choice that you can see with your range. Make a ranged spell attack for each missile. On hit, it does 2d4 force damage. So immediately, if we're comparing it to Magic Missile, Magic Missile is you point at three things, or one thing, or two things, and uh, two different things, and you can assign three darts to them. This one, you make three attack rolls. The attack, if the attack crits, the missile does 5d4 damage instead of 4d4 damage. If you would roll a natural one, on any of the three missiles, all of them miss, and you take one damage per missile. At higher levels, you get extra attacks, one per slot as you go up, uh, and the gold tax increases by a gold for each use. Uh, that's Jim's Magic Missile. It is the opposite of Magic Missile as far as variance goes. This is a high-risk, high-reward, feast-famine kind of spell. Its objective is to give you the feeling of big, explody moments and, oh my god, it blew up in my face moments. I like that about it. What I don't like is that was it, hypoallergenic, gluten-free bullshit. Oh, that that it, it, it just feels like cheap meme humor, and that that's the the worst thing about ah, it's, it's just lazy comedy. It's sure, it's like a a Karen joke. God, I hate it. Um, <laughs> okay, I didn't know anything about Jim Dark Magic, so also sure. I'm I'm picturing. Uh, with John Krasinski in my D&D &D game and you know love the guy but no thank you <laughs> sure um, uh, yeah listen this as everyone's always said comedy is subjective this is going to be for some people it's not going to be for others not for Bob um the Acquisitions Incorporated book's probably not for Bob in this instance because it is full of these kinds of things um it might be for you though. Even if it's not for you, like comedy wise, if you like mechanically what's happening here, you can, all the text is, all the text that is not mechanical is ignorable, is how I like to always look at it. You can reframe spells to function however you'd like thematically, so long as mechanically they're a realm of consistency. I'll um, always know though. You will always know that hypoallergenic gluten free darts are what you're firing, and oh. you'll throw up in your mouth a little bit every single time you hear it. <laughs> Like you're allergic to it. I've never seen you this repulsed by something in my entire life. This is incredible. Uh, Bob is really like, I can't believe this I'm, thing would do I'm, this. How I'm dare they? It's, uh, it, it, I am I am a comedy writer. This offends me. Sure. You know, I, <laughs> I work hard on, on my craft. Yeah, I'm listen, I'm I my only comments may be rude, so I'm gonna hold on to them because I've <laughs> I've seen the genre. So I get what you write, and you know, it's people got their taste. That's fine. Um in any case, you said you do like the variants of it though. Yeah, yeah, that's all fine. Uh it feels what was it like chromatic orb or scorching ray, one of those where it's uh you know, not guaranteed, but you got a chance of bigger hits. I do like that. I think compared to Chromatic Orb, this is doing that spell's job correctly because this spell tells you it's high variance, but you have lots of opportunities for the variance to occur. So it very often won't do nothing, but you will have moments where it does do nothing and explodes horribly in your face and you take it for that reason, right? 
I think that this spell putting it all on its face. I am the kind of person that I don't want this on my character sheet. This is something that I would get annoyed by and that if it fails to function, I'm going to take three damage and be like, that was stupid and lame and nothing <laughs> happened. And the provide continues to progress and that's annoying. Other I people think are it's going annoying, to... stupid and lame for different reasons. Exactly. Go Other ahead. people though, like you, while I may think the comedy is perfectly acceptable, you may take the mechanics and be perfectly acceptable. And in that world, you like the, maybe you crit. And when you crit, you do 15d4 force damage for a first level spell. And that's hilarious and absurd amounts of damage. Alternatively, if one of those rolls is a one and the other two are crits, you they all blow up in your face and you take three damage. And that's the end of the turn for you. And that is, that kind of variance isn't even going to be happening every, every time you cast it. It's not going to be happening most of the time when you cast it. But it is going to be happening enough that you'll feel like it's a very fun time because it's happening three times more than a chromatic order is one or 20. It's happening, uh, three dice give you more opportunities for this feast or famine stuff. And it's going to make it so threes and fives feel a lot worse. Whenever you're only you're still hitting with one of the three missiles, you're still getting something out of the spell most of the time you cast it. It makes it feel consistently fun for the most part. You'll consistently do something with it. And then have those rare moments of extremes that are going to feel great. All right. Going off topic again. Hit me with it. Um, I, I like silliness in my D&D game. Mm -hmm. I love it. I That's the only way I play. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to bring it. I don't, want, I I don't want it. I don't want it to be baked into the game. Then, you know, what am I contributing? <laughs> That's We're getting very personal, Bob. You, you yeah. need to talk about this. Well, that's what we're doing. This is my therapy. <laughs> I think so. While, while I think that uh, I agree, I am in a lot of your same boat. I think that a lot of the silliness and fun of Dungeons and Dragons it looks different for everybody. I tend to enjoy playing into character tropes. I tend to enjoy doing, like, I like my silliness in my RP characters of being, like, particularly haughty and, uh, like, you know, ugh, how dare this plebeian touch me? Or also the character that is the the downtown or the, uh, you know, the hillbilly folk from out in the middle of bumfuck nowhere kind of fella. That is, I like those kinds of characters and, in, in like, personifying them and, uh, getting into the realm of like comedy in varying elements of different kinds of characters and you know you have the scumbag that is you know always swindling people and trying to get away and the narrative character elements of that I really enjoy playing up at the same time I also really don't like the kind of comedy that is often in D&D &D where it's <laughs> silly funny randomness but go boom I find that to be really annoying and irritating. I don't love the murder hobo aesthetic, but I know a lot of people do. I know a lot of people that really do like the, we're burning the town down because that'd be just really funny and wouldn't it be silly and wacky if I played a pyromancer who just wants to blow up the world? I'm not into that kind of brand of comedy, but I know there's a lot of D&D players who are, and that's if that's how they would like to play their tables, I have no problem with that. That's their table. They can do it as they please. I think that this kind of spell in this instance, it will... It's definitely targeted. The book was written for people who like the Acquisitions Incorporated stuff. And while Jim's Magic Missile mechanically may fit some people's play aesthetic, I don't think even, I think it comes in enough of a setting and it comes with enough of a loaded terms, like it being Jim's specifically and having the the specific jokey language at the front of it. It's going to be a major turnoff for a lot of people that don't want that brought into the table. A lot of the fun, I know that people tend to enjoy from Dungeons Dragons is poking fun at the genre while playing it, right? It is a, how unbelievably, and I, I am part of this group, right? How unbelievably stupid is it that we have a reverse gravity going and are trying to take this fight seriously? How unbelievably stupid is it that the halfling uh, just one shot the dragon with a ridiculous crit through its nostril right like it's stupid it doesn't make any sense there's things that are are really silly about it that give us a lot can give people a lot of enjoyment and while that may be how a lot of people want to approach it others still may want to bring elements of comedy straight into the game other people may want to be the you know the tiny gnome with five foot legs that i saw on reddit earlier today right that's not where i want to bring in my comedy for Dungeons and dragons that's not necessarily where i want to see it coming from but it is where some people do and that's fine if that's you i will say that if you're the person, you're the kind of person that thinks hypoallergenic, gluten-free magic missiles is funny, I don't want you to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, Bob, you're really passionate about this specific joke. Okay, yeah, sure. That's listen. I I want a person that thinks the hypoallergenic gluten-free darts is funny. I want you to be happy. Well, there we disagree. There we disagree. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm too heated up to talk about the mechanics anymore. I know. Uh, I can you tell. Got, you, you got anything else to say? 
I think this spell is fun. It's not for me. I think the spell isn't for Bobby either. <laughs> Am yeah. I right? <laughs> you're, yeah. you're correct. It should you're... be. All the words are right for it to be good oh, for yeah, you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Minus the flavor stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Did you got a rating? I think this is probably a, a pretty comfortable three. This isn't game breaking the game or anything. This is a fine first level damage spell. Uh, I would let it happen to the table. If you wanted to bring this up, I'd be like, yeah, absolutely. That's going to be fun. Um, yeah, but this isn't breaking the game in half or anything. This isn't like Magic Missile. Oh, this is always doing 3D, 4 plus 3 consistently. Great. One. Fuck you, Jim. All right. Thank you, Sam. Uh, this has been Jim's Magic Missile. Thank you, Sam. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, I'll be in a better mood next time. That, I don't believe that, but all right, let's go. We're going through all the Acquisition Incorporated right. once. No, we're not. No, we're not. No. I, I, I just need to get this one off my chest. Okay. All right. It's, it, it's there. It's out in the, in the ether. Hmm. All right. See you in the future. Bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.